And now we are going to hear from Mr. Uh, Arnold Lupinski. Uh, he has uh, 15 minutes to tell you about, let's see where, I can remember where it was, it, la, la déontologie du, du décart scientifique. Merci. Je vais vous entretenir maintenant. Now I'm going to speak about the subject relevant to the efficacy of our action that is the issue of our session that is uh, the very topic of this symposium. It's efficacy and the aim we all pursue. The issue I'm going to deal with uh, is a basic one and this crucial issue refers to the principle underlying uh, our whole uh, working session. These are uh, problems uh, must be re-brought to the forefront in order to achieve the efficacy we aim at. So what is the role of debate within science and what is the role of science within debate? What is the role of the Shred of Christ within the scientific debate? So here we have three crucial issues of what is the language we must use when speaking about the Shred uh, of Turin, what is the procedure enabling us to be rigorous and, effi and efficient and uh, in which place uh, can this language develop? So just as Professor Carbon just said, the deontology of uh, the scientific debate uh, has become the linchpin of the issue of uh, the Shroud of Turin, which calls uh, us to meet here in Rome. And uh, through the problem, through the scientific challenge uh, it launches, no scientific relic is uh, more puzzling than this one. And this is the reason why science and the media and the scientific institutions could not find a common language in order to give the public opinion a rightful representation of truth as to the Shroud of Turin. My intention today is to stress to what extent the language to be adopted is a priority conditioning uh, all the researches, uh, starting with the preservation of the Shroud of Turing. In order to preserve an object, we must speak about it, we must take decision, and we must engage in debates. Therefore, we must uh, prove up to what extent a language must be adopted and what should we do in order to reach a common language between science and institutions in order to say how the intelligences uh, can be involved, thereby leading to the success of our enterprise. So scientists bear the responsibility of developing uh, the specialized uh, field in the various dis disciplines involved. And I must also examine the issue of the Shroud of Turin as a whole, as a logic block which is consistent and cannot be divided. So we, in our capacity as uh, scientists, must uh, put the ontology of the scientific debate beyond the borders where it is usually kept so that the Shroud of Turin be recognized in it uh, in its uh, authenticity. Should uh, scientists fail to bear the responsibility 
of having the holy fraud recognized as to the scientific authenticity, who else uh, could do this? Uh, who could uh, play this role if uh, scientists refuse it? So we must use the scientific method. We must start from science. We must start again from its multidisciplinary origins. So science must be used in order to demonstrate what the Shroud of Turin is. And this challenge must be accepted. So due to the nature itself of the Shroud of Turin, we must prove our intelligence and go beyond the what is evident in order to ask ourselves a crucial issue. Is the Shroud of Turing really what it looks? Science must prove on an ontologic level what is the ontological truth of the authenticity of this finding. As a matter of fact, As you can see from the slide, as of 1357, uh, everything happens as if the shroud was authentic. Uh, every, many people said since the beginning that this was a, a true finding. Others said it was a faked finding. But a faked finding is something vis-a-vis -vis which everything takes place as if. And you all know that uh, everything ha um, happens uh, as if. Uh, starting from Newton, and this is the criterion to apply, to be applied, to get to do the scientific authenticity. As to the Turin shroud, this requires an ontological demonstration. At a certain moment, it is necessary to say that not only totally everything takes place as if, or that this is or is not. And this is what uh, public opinion is mainly interested in, and what uh, it is uh, waiting for. So no finding is uh, more interdisciplinary and more difficult and complex than this. There is no reason why, therefore, there is no reason for surprise if, as of uh, 1988, a discussion on the Shroud of Turin is uh, being subject to a series of polemics, uh, which uh, is going on, has been going on. And this uh, polemics, uh, this battle, has a lot of participants, uh, religious people, historians, uh, who are faced with artists and scientists. We should not uh, wonder very much about this point, but we can say that the features of scientists and artists uh, is that uh, they can penetrate in the object uh, through reasoning or uh, glances, while some religious people and historians need a line, a guideline, or a thread, which, uh, as the Stroud, does not allow us to connect our period to the first century. Hence, the paradox, the unprecedented paradox of this archaeological finding, which is very famous and uh, uh, has been object and subject to assessments and studies. Uh, we collected a series of information, but uh, our collectivity does not uh, know how to integrate this information, how to talk of the shroud. And if we are here together today, it's because we want to try and fix, uh, in a way, this uh, scandalous, this, uh, this anomalous uh, situation. The Shroud of Turim has uh, the right to be acknowledged as its uh, identity. After uh, centuries of discussion, polemics, and wrong information, and considering the difficulties and, what, and the, the, what is at stake, it is necessary to uh, acknowledge the evidence. Only the deontology of the scientific discussion 
can allow us to be successful and to get to a result. And it is in order to meet these need, the needs that uh, this symposium was organized as a place, and I stress the word place, an interdisciplinary place uh, of, uh, and a uh, place for discussion, which has to be ruled by scientific deontology. From time to time, it is necessary to wonder and uh, question us about the meaning of science. The science has its own structure. Now we have to remember that the language that is semantics has to be placed in the forefront. And uh, uh, restoration of uh, scientific orthodoxy is something necessary. Science is a theoretical discourse based on the principle of non-contradiction. It is not but the transposition of the principle of the ontological identity of the being, what is uh, or what is not, something which is, was very known to Aristoteles. One thing cannot be and not be at the same time. It is either one thing or the other. The theoretical discussion of science is not uh, a discourse like others. It is a procedures um, frame or uh, mirroring the uh, trial as uh, the uh, scientific or the uh, legal uh, inquiry provides for various steps and stages. We have to strengthen the formalization of this procedure. As more remark as to this uh, chart uh, from Galileo's, uh, we know that in order for a study to be scientific, it is necessary to have, first of all, the experimental observation. It is uh, necessary to have uh, measurements, uh, calculations. There must be a theory and there must be a, a discussion. So we get to the core of the problem. We need to say whether we need to assess whether the uh, shroud is a false or faked fabric. But since we do not manage to prove it, uh, our society is uh, abandoning the basic rules of the scientific debate because it doesn't uh, uh, answer the questions to the people in charge with the uh, carbon-14 dating, uh, since they do not answer these questions, they uh, just place themselves outside the discussion. When uh, the situation was uh, um, compared to the diagram with a chart I'm just uh, mentioning here, we can say that uh, the labs uh, did not take into account a series of information, for instance, uh, the uh, cotton which was uh, analyzed in Oxford. When we move to mathematics, we see that carbon-14 is based on mathematical data, but there are statistics too, and the statistics are contradictory. When we consider theory, particularly interdisciplinary aspect, dating uh, through carbon-14 did not take into account theory, and as to the uh, discussion, the people in charge of the dating were invited, but they didn't accept the invitation. So, as to the these aspects, there are some irregularities which have to be stressed. So, in order to uh, favor this wish of science, uh, that uh, the discussion was organized. As director of the Rome project, I tried and encouraged the participation of all those who could contribute in looking for truth about the Shroud of Turing and uh, the um, the mail we exchange prove that there were personal meetings. Nobody was forgotten. You can be sure that the people who are not present here, who are not sitting here among us, because of material uh, impossibility of being here or because uh, they had nothing to say, they chose not to come, not to participate in our work. We can add that these people are very few, actually. Essentially, the authority of the British Museum, which is the only big absentee here today, if we add that their viewpoints will be taken into account and that part of the exchange of mail with them will be, will be presented during our discussion, we can say that this, this symposium represents the 
assembly which is qualified to discuss and examine the set of uh, scientific problems posed by the Shroud of Turin. Today, we have to be fully aware of our responsibility and the whole of the scientific collectivity working in this sector since the beginning of our century. This means that considering the efforts made and the work we took on, we have to try and reach a full success of our symposium. If our international scientific community had to meet in plenary session, is because this uh, scientific symposium is the only place for s global scientific discussion. Considering the various parts participating in it, uh, why this privileged place? First of all, because of the exceptionally interdisciplinary feature of this, uh, which is extremely necessary. Moreover, there was a lack, a lot of opacity as to the question of uh, the shroud. We have to try and be effective and efficient in our work. And this is exactly the objective of our session. We have the four to make science express itself. We have to discuss and we have to adopt a method. This is our task and it is because of the importance of this objective that we met here. We wanted to offer you a meeting point. We wanted to allow journalists and mass media to know the result reached up to now by research in order to try and meet our efforts as well as the expectations of the international collectivity. We want to be a basis for, of reference for the future discussion. We have therefore formally expressed recommendations and motions which can be as clear as possible along the three main pillars of our symposium, preservation, scientific stages and proposals. Two, for, for 1998, the integration of all our work and the awareness of the fact that these works are interdisciplinary and have to be based on the, on the ontology of the scientific uh, discussion is a prerequisite for our success and we can carry out an important and positive work only if we take into account this criterion. It, to conclude, I would like to remind you of the basis according to which we should complete what we were asked to do. It's up to us as scientists, and we have to be aware of this, to say what the science says. This object is full of questions. It is something which can cause uneasiness. But what we are asked to do is to apply our method exclusively our method and say this is what science says. Science can be wrong. It is true we can reject it, but we have simply to apply science. This is what the science what science says. We should say not what we like but what the science says. There cannot be any discussion without a formal scientific statement. If science starts with questions, it gets two statements at the end of our symposium. We have to get two statements, two scientific statements.